Welcome back. Are you one of those people you hear the word Bitcoin and you get totally lost? You feel like you're out of the loop. You don't really know what's going on. Listen, the truth is you are not alone. There are a lot of people out there who still don't get it. The hardest thing for some people to wrap their head around is that money isn't physical paper money. We're all used to. So will this technology finally be embraced here in the United States? Here to teach us a few basic things about Bitcoin, Natalie Brunel, Bitcoin educator and host of Coin Stories podcast. Uh, Natalie, hi, good morning, how are you? Good morning, Aroxia. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, this is a topic I want to talk to you about because the truth is I myself still don't really get it. So what is it? What is Bitcoin? Don't worry, Aroxia. We've all been there, including myself. But Bitcoin, like you mentioned, it is a digital form of money. It's a digital savings technology that was invented about 12 years ago. And it went from having a price of just a few cents to being worth more than $60,000 per Bitcoin today. And there are two really attractive qualities about Bitcoin. So the first is it's absolutely scarce. It was programmed to only have 21 million Bitcoins ever to come into existence. So think of it as 21 million plots of digital real estate, which is very different from some of the other cryptocurrencies. And the second is it's decentralized. So no bank or government can control its supply and there are no third parties involved in transactions. So just in the same way that you would hand someone a $5 bill, hand someone cash, this is digital cash where you are sending value directly from one person to another across the world and there were no third parties involved in the transactions and they settle almost instantly. So how do you get in on it? I mean, for a lot of people, even, I mean, this is a strange comparison but you know people like some people like to read a newspaper they physically want to hold it it just there's a comfort factor in it versus reading it online or on their phone how do you get people to get their mind and accept this and get comfortable with the thought of this yeah, so I mean, a lot of us just transact with things like our digital bank accounts, right? Not a lot of us actually use cash, but the most, most important thing is I think we need to help educate people about inflation and what it's doing to the purchasing power of their money. This is the most important feature, in my opinion, of Bitcoin. In the US, our money, our paper money, used to be backed by gold, meaning the Fed had to have you know a certain amount of gold reserves, and then it issued paper notes backed by that asset. But most people forget we went off the gold standard in 1970 with Nixon and it was supposed to be temporary but here we are 50 years later and we have been printing money that's backed by essentially nothing at this point but US debt and 40% of the dollars in existence today were printed just in the last year in response to COVID people are feeling that effect in real time things are getting more expensive because our dollar supply has expanded and the purchasing power is weakening year by year now Bitcoiners want people to be able to hold value in their money that they work so hard for and Bitcoiners see money printing as really the ultimate source of wealth inequality. And I want to touch on that for a second, because when the Fed prints new money, those dollars are sent to banks and then lended first to the people at the top of the, of the top of the food pyramid, the top of the food chain, the ones closest to the money printer, the investment funds, the big corporations, wealthy individuals, they get all that new money. And you know, that has a profound impact on the kinds of assets that wealthy people purchase, like stocks and real estate, which creates these big bubbles. We have all-time highs in the stock market. Real estate is skyrocketing high. Bitcoin allows people to opt out of that system and into one that has no inflation. And if you look at a chart like you showed of the dollar, mm -hmm. the purchasing power of the dollar decreasing, well, meanwhile, Bitcoin has appreciated in value about a million percent in the last 11 years. Bitcoin prices seem to be surging, though. Why is that? Yeah, so Bitcoin has been on sort of a tear the last few weeks. We're super close to a new all-time high. And part of the reason for that is we're about to witness history with a Bitcoin fund hitting the New York Stock Exchange. So for those stock traders out there, as of tomorrow, you can actually invest in an ETF, an exchange-traded fund that's linked to Bitcoin. It'll give investors exposure to Bitcoin without actually having to hold the asset directly. And this is a huge step forward because the SEC approving this essentially legitimizes Bitcoin, meaning the U.S. will not try to ban it like China. But I do want to say that a lot of Bitcoiners actually discourage the ETF and owning it because they feel people should buy and own Bitcoin directly, giving you 100% ownership of your coins.